Hello everyone, welcome to an action-packed ARG that was written in the stars. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by a man whose astrological symbol is one star, the southern star. It's the Brent. It's actually the sun, because I'm so bright and happy. You're not that bright, clearly, after what I just oh, saw. that's not fair. What a dipstick, everybody. So, if you joined us last week, we spun the wheel and we made the deal. And this week, Brent, I know you're excited about this one. I We'll be playing games on the incredibly rare Mattel Aquarius computer. I enjoyed this far more than I thought I would. Mm, there you go. Now, up to this point, Brent, yes. what do you know, or what did you know, about the Aquarius computer? I Very like the song. Uh, who doesn't? You know? That's, that is literally my my complete uh, knowledge of Aquarius. And, and, but, so you don't know anything about the... Uh, and what did you know about Zippo. Mattel Electronics uh, entries, forays, if you will, into the video game and computer industry? Well, we video a, game I knew a bit, but yeah. computers I had no knowledge. We've actually covered a couple of Mint Mattel Electronics devices, mm -hmm. if you'll recall, because... Yes. If I'm not mistaken, your Advanced Dungeons and Dragons board mm -hmm. games was, was from Mattel Electronics, and of course we've some time back. My gosh, I don't even know when. It's how, been a while. We recovered the, uh, the in television. Uh, so this <clears throat> was Mattel's offering in the realm of computers. You had to have a computer back in the '80s. If yes. You didn't have a computer coming out. What the heck were you doing? You're getting left <laughs> behind. That's what you know. Uh, the funny thing about that, we say that in jest, but. Uh, everyone back in those days thought computers were the way to go, didn't they? I mean, well, well they you didn't right. know. You were too young. Just... But I can tell you, uh, um, this was like the uh, the golden chalice or the or the brass ring of home console games was to somehow either turn what you had into a computer or to come up with a computer right yes. away. Yep. Now, Atari was right out of the gate strong in the 70s with their uh, Atari computers. Uh, uh, a great line. Now they they held them too long before they yes. upgraded them. Way yeah. too long. But their eight bit line was was on and strong and good to go. They're an excellent uh, uh, bunch of computers. But I'm talking in the early days. So Atari was already in the game. But you had ColecoVision trying to jump in with the Atom. And of course, ColecoVision and Atari were going head to head uh, in the in the console world. And of course, you had to have who was the third player? You had it was in television. Mattel's in television. And they had long promised that the Intellivision could be turned into a computer. Yeah. Which we, if you'll recall, during the episode we did on Intellivision, that didn't go too good no. for them, including lawsuits and, and a bunch of trouble. And so what they did was they basically outsourced a new computer, which is the Aquarius. So I did a little, I did a, a little look in here, Brent. You know, all these people, uh, you saw what ended up winning was you don't attack the home market so much as you attack the business market. And yeah. You know these these uh the console people never did that or never did it to the I, right degree. I often wonder. I mean, if, if you think back again, this is before your time, but you not you know what's going on. Um, you have the the what what the early computer makers wanted was to infiltrate the schools. It was yeah. a, one of the first things. You know, I never looked at the Atari line, for example, as a line of computers that you would see in a in an in office. A business, yeah. Now that doesn't mean no people did use them, just like Absolutely. they used the C sixty four and everything yep. else. <clears throat> but I mean, I can't imagine someone taking a, a, a consoleized computer, you know, a computer that they a console that turned into a computer, uh, and using that to perform any sort of legitimate bit. Like, can you imagine having a Coleco Atom or or a uh, Aquarius? In your garage or a pharmacy to keep track of stuff, I, I just, and I don't think I don't know if that ever. I guess they were shooting for the home market and the they home were. market alone. Yeah, and, and and but you know, history tells us that th that actually wasn't the market to shoot for. You know, it's funny you think about it because these are the we're talking about early early computers. And my phone makes a noise. We're talking about these early computers, and um, it's hard to make a, a computer. It really oh, is. Course, I mean, this yeah. computer came out in like eighty three, I believe. 82. Now, 82. And, and if you look at what was around, all right, you've got, and, and especially like, say, uh, uh, we're talking like stuff like the Atari 8 bits, <clears throat> and the Spectrum, uh, the, all the British computers. Mm -hmm. uh, and th then you've got some of these computers that came out over here that were just dogs. I mean, they were yes. just absolutely, they had all kinds of problems. Now, they just this flooded is, the market and hoped something stopped. This is not to insult those computers now or people that use no, them. No. But just, I mean, if you're a modern Aquarius owner, you're putting up with a lot, you know, and a lot of people still use the Atom or the TI, and, stuff. and these are, like, the TI don't group with these, but my point is, 
it's difficult to get a computer that is popular, that is affordable, and that is competent. That's a tough. That's a tough trio. Yeah, and if I you agree. want to play good games and stuff, you know, that's a whole other ball of wax. So anyway, as I was saying, I looked up a little, a few factoids on this bad boy because this was a, this is such a rare computer. But I really, honestly, don't know much about it myself. So I, I thought it would be a good idea to look into it. So. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, this was, by the way, announced at 82, but released at 83, yeah. as I mentioned, June of 83. The, this could, this may have the shortest run of anything we've ever looked at. It was discontinued. It started in June of 83 and was discontinued October of 83. Yeah. So you're talking a very short lifespan. Now, any, you want to take a guess? I love making you a guess. How, how many things do you think were sold in the U.S. and Australia where they were marketed? I will say... Ten thousand, not bad. Eight thousand, yeah. And that and that number is a little. Brrr, you never know. Yeah. You know, it's a little. It's up in the air. Uh, I guess they didn't track these too good. So, <laughs> what was this Aquarius that uh, they put out? Well, this had a, a Zilog, a Z eighty processor, and a pretty common. As most of all, now did. now this thing only had four K <clears throat> of memory out of the box, uh, which is I mean that's not unheard of, but that's that's pretty that's low. Pretty low. Uh, now you could expand this thing to twenty K of RAM. Uh, with an expansion, which I'll get to. This had one of those god awful um, rubber keyboards, old chiclets. Yeah, yeah. remember those? Can you imagine doing any real work on a chiclet keyboard? It's it's one step above the Odyssey Two keyboard, and that's and that's not and, and not at much. It's really more a step to the side, maybe yeah. a little diagonal. Yeah, it was a forty eight key chiclet keyboard. Now uh, the funny thing about this computer, and we'll just get to this right away. We're cut to the crap. Um, You've got the Intellivision there, a, a pretty powerful console for the day. Sure, all right, I'll agree with that. It was a very, it was a marked improvement graphically from the uh, Atari, for example, uh, and it also had good sound. Uh, and so you come out with a computer that is much worse at, at sound and, in generally, is not as graphically capable as not even close, frankly. Yeah. So this has got to be one of the few times this has ever happened where the console came out, and then the computer came out, and the computer was way, way weaker than the console. Do you find yeah. that odd? Well, they were going for budget. They were... Who would buy this, though? What would you... <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's the one thing that... Blew. This thing is a, a, was doomed for... Well, jump. you know, I think they were marking on people who owned and enjoyed television yeah. to give this a try. And I think they were hoping they could get it cheap enough that people would give it a try, and that way it would get into some homes. Oh, maybe you're right. Um, So, this thing... uh. It was very limited in what you could do with the base console or the base uh, computer. Yeah, it had it had a, a TV out port, the old Channel Three, Channel Four. Uh, it had the uh, a, an expansion or cartridge slot. It had a tape recorder slot and it had a printer slot. That's it. No joystick ports, no nothing. <clears throat> so you got problems. I did have a, it did have a printer port. So I guess at least could... it was smart enough to have a, an, an actual expansion port, though. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that saved now, it. Mattel didn't design this thing. They had it designed by one of the, some of the, one of the outfits that actually manufactured in televisions, an outfit called Radafin. Yes. All right. Now, Very important. Have you? Do you know anything about Radafin? I, I didn't I look didn't, into them that much. I didn't, but I know that they uh, they picked up the fumble. Yeah. Well, well, I guess you could say that. So they developed two computers uh, for uh, Mattel, and they they named them Chess Checkers and Chess. Checkers was the uh, basically the Aquarius, and Chess would have been effectively the Aquarius Two, which we'll get into yeah. in, a, in, a, in a moment. Um, these things shipped. You want to guess the price on these back in uh, in eighty three? I already know the price. Oh, you already know? Yes, it's a hundred and sixty dollars. Yes, it was. Now in today money, four hundred eleven bucks. That's yeah, dirt that's cheap. dirt cheap for the. For for the price, so I mean, they were definitely going in there for the bargain basement. Yeah, they were budgeting it they on that for budget. So, um, now the, out of the box, the Aquarius was a, a 4K paperweight. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot. You, I mean, honestly, you know, you've got nothing to work with here. So it often came bundled with this thing called the uh, Mini Expander Peripheral. All yes. Right? Now the Mini Expander Peripheral, I would compare it. Uh, well, there's nothing really to compare it to, but in some ways, it's sort of like the uh, the uh, car computer sidecar with you know the uh, side expanded with the multiple card slots. Yeah. This thing came with it. Well, except it was more. It's more like an Amiga thing actually, because it came with memory and expansion and ports. It made it usable. Yeah. It, <laughs> you hook this thing into the into the uh, cartridge slot of the, of the Aquarius or the expansion slot, however you want to term it, and it gave you two cartridge slots. Uh, it gave you two joystick ports. 
or gamepad ports, I guess is a better way to put it, and it gave you up to 20K of memory. Yes. So, and also it added sound capabilities. This is, so basically, this thing was like a miracle unit. That yeah. had, and the thing is, it was right at the time, this should have been included. With this all. Should, well, I mean, it should, should have been, been built in. Right. right. Yeah. While they made this, a, 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 they're getting they're getting chintzy is what they're doing, in my opinion. <clears throat> they wanted that low entry point, then they stick it to you with the add-ons, right? And that's what they were doing here, in my opinion. So, without this thing, you were pretty much screwed. Yeah. Now, uh, when you bought this thing, you, you also, like I said, we had joystick ports or gamepad ports. The gamepads on these, uh, if you if you think about the in, uh, the Intellivision gamepad, which is a, has like a telephone keypad on it, mm-hmm. you know, except it's they're not they're flat but pressure mm-hmm. buttons, and a, and a, and a disc, and it's got buttons, a couple buttons on the side. On the sides, right? Uh, this is like the cut rate. <laughs> this is the cut rate. So if you thought if you looked at the Intellivision controller and you thought to yourself. That's way too extravagant for me. I need something. I need something for the people, low end, because this thing was exactly the same, except it only had six buttons on it, and was just kind of. It was just an ugly color. It's not an not an. I mean, the the, the Intellivision controller. People hate it, right? Some yeah, people hate horrible. it, and it's got its. I, I I like it for some games, but it's gold. It looks oh, nice. Oh, it looks beautiful. You know, it's yeah. brown and good button draw gold. This thing is just, it's utilitarian to say the least. <laughs> this looks like it came out, like, this console reminds me of it would be manufactured like Soviet era Russia. It, you know, like the, the Gulag. They, they had a bunch of Intellivision controllers that uh, hadn't made it to paint or anything yet and they dropped them on the floor and broke them. They're like, ah, that's good enough. Put it with the Aquarius. Yeah. Uh, and so, but the, this was your, these were your game patches and we'll get a little bit more into the, in them in a minute. Uh, a little tip <laughs> that was on Wiki, which I amused me. The people internally, the the Mattel Electronics programmers, they called this they called the Aquarius the system for the seventies, <laughs> which is unfortunate because it was out in eighty three. Right. So you could tell right away they were not impressed with the with the Aquarius. Um, <coughs> believe it or not, this thing could uh, they had uh, thermal printers. They had. Yep. Uh, of course, you had a, a they had made it there a, a label of the cassette deck you could yes. put into it for saving programs. It also had a modem. It had a thirty two. Oh, it had a modem. It I had didn't a three hundred baud modem you could get a thirty two k RAM cartridge. We mentioned that the uh, expander has two cartridge slots. One of those is like a memory expansion, and the other one is for the actual cartridge. Right, for the cart. Yeah. The car- Let's talk about the cartridges on this thing. Pretty wacky, weren't they? Well, they were big. Well, they were goofy looking. They were they they were the the cartridge part that plugs in was a good size, and then the top part was fat. Yeah, it, this thing had a big booty. Yeah. basically. I don't. What, I've never seen cartridges like well, that. Well, you know, yet. if you're getting robbed and you want to, you want to club a man, you just grab the Aquarius cartridge. I like to know what's in that thing. <laughs> you know, what is it? Just empty, or is there something in there? Do they? they what's had packed a, in there? I, I, I'd love to know. I'm gonna buy one just to take it apart. <laughs> see what the hell's in that thing. So, um, the. Uh, of, oh, it, it's Mossy Mothmania. It's been a while. So, the uh, of the thirty-two announced titles for this machine, 20, 21 of them were released, and a lot of them were ports of uh, games from the Intellivision. Now, keep in mind, Intellivision better, this worse. So you can imagine how those things uh, came across. Uh, so, again, this thing hit the shelves, and literally, this right after it got released, it was discontinued. Yeah. And they announced the yeah. Aquarius 2 electric boogaloo. The Aquarius 2 is going to be a better machine, and there were there were some released. Right, some. Some. There are so few that they're incredibly rare. I've never seen one. No. Myself. And, and I'm guessing if I got on YouTube and nosed around, I might be able to find one, but I, 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 I could not find one. Uh, so, again, the rest of this is pretty much just like you think. The thing went out, it failed, it died because no one could do anything with it. I mean, it's really, it's a short story. Uh, Mattel, in fact, it flopped so thoroughly that Mattel ended up selling the rights to it back to the company that made it. Yes. And then, and, and, uh, 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 and a, uh, a slew of small companies gathered up these rights and did things with them. Uh, uh, not much, clearly. But I mean, what are you going to do? Why you would buy this thing back is, is, is quite amazing to me. Well, they took it, they sold it. They, they continued to sell the Aquarius. Uh, especially over uh, overseas for quite a while. Now get this, <clears throat> they had they developed a thing called the Aquarius Master Expansion Module. Impressive, eh? Good name. It was a big doodad that had room for two floppy disk drives and seven. This is a quote: seven built-in 
peripheral board to expand the Aquarius memory and expand it into the technology of the future at your own pace. The tagline. It sounds good to me, man. Uh, <laughs> this thing was uh, barely released, as you can imagine. Who's going to buy it? And there were also multiple uh, cartridges released of this thing that for upgrading the memory. But again, to what end? Yeah. I, I, I must ask. So, it's funny that this would come up on the wheel, because we, we both are sort of intelligent. Intelligent. <laughs> We both intelligent. <laughs> we're both sort of in, in, we're both sort of in television fans, aren't we? Bro? Yeah, and, yeah. And I've got a couple of televisions, uh, and uh, um, a lot, I love the, the Intellivision. And so I've always wanted to give this thing a whirl. And I, it's funny the expand the expansion thing with the extra cartridge slots, the joysticks. I actually almost bought one of these without having the Aquarius. It's like oh, I'll get the Aquarius later, but I talked myself out of it because the guy was asking like fifty bucks or whatever. I was like, yeah, what am I gonna do with it? <laughs> So it's I didn't buy it, but I saw I have seen that, but I've never actually got to actually touch the actual Aquarius, and so I was looking forward to trying this because my in my brain without doing any research, cause screw that, I thought this would be like the Cleco Adam, like you get all the games plus yeah. more. Incorrect. No, you got you got some of the games plus less. However, uh, we th- of all the titles released, the twenty one titles. <coughs> oh well, I'll get to it. Out of the twenty one titles were released, we picked a couple. I'm going to let you know. I want to make this a buddy of Kurt's. Brent was not happy. Oh, Kurt and Jerkin today. Brent's game is at least as good as mine. I will say that. Well, <laughs> so, well I, and actually, did you look at any other games? I, d- I did look at a couple. See, I, I went through, and I really, there was a lot of games I wanted to do for this. Oh, really? Uh, and I, I want to at least touch on just a couple okay, of them. Okay, go ahead. At least conceptual, uh, the concept of them. I really wanted to do Mower Man. All right. Uh, Mower Man is a game all about mowing lawns. Which that sounds and, like a horrible and, game. And you avoid bees, and you have to complete the lines, and you have to keep eating sandwiches, or you'll run out of energy, and you can't finish the lawn. Yeah. Really, really wanted to play this. I went to all my super secret sources, uh-huh. and no one. First of all, no one had heard of it. Uh, second of all, no one had any any knowledge of any dumps for it. Any because it was a it was a cassette game. Not saying. Uh, oh my, that was so be rare. So general yeah. public, if you know of a way that I can play Mower Man on the Aquarius, please hook me up. I really want to try it's a it. Personal quest. <laughs> it is one of those games that, uh, and I've seen pictures. And it, it just. It, I bet it's an Amadar clone. That's my guess. <laughs> the uh, the second game I want to talk about is Hopper. Now, Hopper uh, is a Frogger clone, Mm -hmm. Uh, and and when I say clone, let me tell you something, guys. The name changes for these are so obvious. I mean, Hopper is... Yeah, it's uh, very Coco-like. Yeah, their their Pac-Man clone was called Mr. Pac. Mm, That's (laughs) that. Just enough room in there, I wonder. (laughs) They didn't try very hard. But Hopper, I looked up some stuff on the person who developed it, who wrote the code for it. Yeah. And it was a 16-year-old girl who wrote the code, and someone offered her $250 for it, and she took it. Hmm. And it, <coughs> the game was a flop because the system was a flop. You know, nothing sold well. At least she them. made 250 bucks. And, and she she uh, uh, walked away 250 bucks back in 83 at the age of 16, and she never coded professionally again. Well, good for you. You should have contacted her for sure. I, I uh, <laughs> if I would have done her game, Hopper, another game I could not find uh, images for because it was also a tape game. So uh, Aquarius is is woefully underrepresented. It, it was <clears> the <throat> YouTube that finding stuff. Finding I was doing some of the pre production. Not easy to find stuff for. And it's funny. I. You know, it's supported in MAME. Uh, yeah. And so I actually I ended up playing this uh, on in, in browser window. I played it on a, you know, it plays fine, perfect. You know, mm-hmm. it, it plays fine. Uh, just because I didn't have the I didn't have the ROMs for it. And yeah. it's funny of all the emulation stuff I've got. That's one thing that I've never. I mean, there, someone out there that has done it, but I, it wasn't me. So I managed to get hold of it and play it. But so hopefully, you know. I and, and this is a, a, you know, probably never going to happen because it hasn't happened to this point. I would love to see this thing get a little more love. There are emulators out there for it. Uh, no love. There just there aren't a lot of ROMs out there. 
So I would love to see. Why that would happen. you like to see this get more love? Why is this I, of all the systems? Why this one? I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the Aquarius. All right, that's enough. So enough. let's talk about my game Zero In. I love this game. I had for an now this is an edutainment game, so it is it is made to improve your. Say math. that again. Educate, edu. You said edu, edu, edutainment. Well, you know, whatever. And once you play it, you're cane. <laughs> edutainment. It's an. Edu, That's a new word. It's an education entertainment game. Mm -hmm. Uh, to improve your math skills. You need this. No, what? you no, need I'm this desperately. You need one. You need. So they need to make a spelling version. No, oh, I'm. Well, we've talked about that. Oh, no, here episodes. we go. Uh, this is a maze game. Where you uh, travel around the maze to uh, collect numbers, and you either add the number or subtract the number from your total. <coughs> and the goal is to match a target number that is predetermined by the game. All right. There are two types of numbers. There are your normal numbers that you just run into, you add and subtract, all's good. And there are is a highlighted number which will <coughs> excuse me add more time to the clock yeah and the clock runs out you're done it's a two minute clock every time you pick up the red number or add it or subtract to your total uh you get 20 seconds added to your clock so the game starts out oh and there's a the the enemy is called the gobbler and if he runs into you he gobbles 20 seconds of your clock and teleports you to a different place in the maze not always a bad thing. <laughs> well, it is. Well, okay. I don't agree with that, but okay. You have a uh, uh, hundred levels of this game. Yeah. And it starts out bonehead easy. Yeah. You know, the numbers are like, uh, you, your target number might be 10, and you've got a, a 2, a 1, and a 5 floating around. You, you go, you hit it, boom, boom, you're done. Every time you uh, get your target number, you get as much you get a multiplier times how much time you've got left, and that's how you get your score. So you go through the levels, things get harder and harder and harder, and then they get stupid hard. And your target number is like two fifty two, and the numbers are like thirty eight. 51. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's funny. I played this up to level 12, and I was like, this is, oh, this is too no, easy. No. So I just I typed in level 99, and that was just like, it mashed. <laughs> yeah. The number, I was just like, are you kidding me? I looked at all the numbers around. I was like, how the hell do you get that? It's like instant tough. So I don't recommend doing that. Now, there are two things that if you, if you play this without reading the instruction manual that you'll probably miss. One was the you can get more time by hitting the red number. Uh, the second thing is... Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. The second thing is, is there's a, a, a key you can hit that doesn't add or subtract you, but you just pass through the number to get, to get somewhere else in the maze. Uh, vitally important in later stages. Because it gets to the point mm. where there are so many numbers and the maze is so tight that navigating the maze to get to where you want to get to is troublesome. Yeah, you, you often will be just hit numbers accidentally, and you're, you know, right. you know, stuff like that. <laughs> well, you can't walk through numbers. Right. You have to when you hit when you go into them, you either add or subtract, and it pops you on the other side of the number. Yeah. So you can keep going, but you can also hit this key and just pass, which just means you don't yeah. you don't do anything. You just go over. That would have helped. Number. That would have helped me. I didn't know about that. Either. Uh, the game has very little sound effects. It's all beeps and boops. It plays a little victory, uh, doo da doo da when you... Uh, it, can, it plays Camp Town Races, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it's, when you... Uh, it's a pretty uh, competent version, too. Yeah, when you complete a level, it gives you a little fanfare, and you go on to the next level. The score caps out amazingly low. Uh, it only goes to 9999. Did you max it? <clears throat> no, but the later levels, <clears throat> it's pretty easy to max it. Mm. Um... Because you get multipliers based on what your target number was. So the higher your target number is, the higher your score is going to be. <clears throat> I had an incredible amount of fun with this game. A ridiculously stupid amount of fun with this game. I don't know why. 
Uh, I mean, uh, these type of ga <clears throat> games hold a special place in my heart because as a child, I never played them. I, I never played these type of, uh, uh, outside of Oregon Trail, I didn't play games where you, uh, you know. Yeah, educated games, those are horrible games you never want to touch. Oh, I would have played this back in the day, and I will probably play this more in the future. Well, when you picked this, of course, I have no point of reference. But you said it was an edutainment title. That's right. And I was like, oh boy, it's another Brent classic coming up. <laughs> An edutainment title. You got me saying it now. On, <laughs> on on the Aquarius? Oh, good God, no. And so I looked into it. And I want to say one thing, that, and I, this goes with my game as well. Recall, if you will, that these games, uh, that this Aquarius system did not ship with joysticks, game pads. So what you got here was um, uh, keyboard controls with an overlay. Yeah, I found I found the overlays for both for yeah. both our games. Yeah, it, and, it has yeah. overlays for the, the keyboard and, and the, the joystick and the game pads. Right now, if if you'll recall, the Intellivision had these pretty elaborate overlays that went that fit down into the joystick. Yeah, these they were, are not they were real bad. nice. These are just sort of slip in. <clears throat> Uh, and they just, but what they do is allow you. It shows you what keys to use, and so I, because I, I use the keyboard for both these games. Yeah. I, I use joysticks. Oh yeah, I game do too. pad. So, uh, and but they, you know, I, once I found that, I can at least know what keys to hit. Uh, but uh, 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 I sat down to play this game, and I was like, "Good God!" But I will say, the sound was the music was. I thought this was pretty good. Frankly. I mean, especially for, for, for beeps and boobs. Well, it's got one voice. It's got one channel of sound. Yeah. What do you want? You know. Yeah. And so. Uh, Sit down to play this, and it, I'll be darned. It is, uh, it's an idiotic sort of fun. I mean, it's very, it's hard to explain why this is entertaining. It, it's so basic, and and the funny thing is, like the little what's the guy's name, the the bad guy, the gobbler, the gobbler. <clears throat> he's an irritating little jerk, yeah, because he gets in your way. And of course, He'll hover around one of those numbers you really want. <laughs> yeah, and like what makes it worse is when you need a number and it's all the way across the midst because the numbers also move. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so, they go right through walls. They, and they, else. they float around. And so you could get real close to a number and it just leaves. <laughs> you're like, oh, no. <laughs> it's not like you're moving at a breakneck pace or anything. No, no. It's, you know, um, moderate. This, there's nothing I can equate this to. I mean, it's, it's so. It's kind of like Munchkin, but with math. Because that's the way the dot. That's the way I the numbers I was thinking more move. like Berserk, but with math. But yeah, M Casey Munch with math. It's 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 very odd. Uh, it's a simple. I mean, you could have let's let's break this down for a second. You could have taken just the maze part of this. Uh huh. Put a dude in it. Yeah. Had the chomper, whatever his name was. Gobbler. Gobbler. Excuse me. Chomper would have been good too. And then you could have just had your guys shoot him and run around. Sort of like my game. You could have done that. Yeah. So I, that but, sucked. but they took they took some initiative. Now I mean, this is not going to teach you a complex uh, uh, division. Algebra, or, no. But I mean, what it will do is, if you're a kid, makes you think. It, it, you could play. This is one of the few edutainment titles where it's actually kind of fun. Yeah, and you sort of are learning. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be damned. It's not bad. I, I, it's not. I'm telling you, people look at the screen here. They're like, <laughs> are you kidding me? And I will say one thing. When you complete a level, there's a lot of ballyhoo. It plays a yes. song. It's a big thing of text. You yes. did it. Yep. Good God Almighty. Well done. It, you know? it, you're like, yeah. It has just enough fanfare that you're like, I'll play one more. I will say. I pl I'll play one more. I played this way more than I played my game. Uh, way more. Because. Way more. Well, there's a couple yeah. reasons, but not the least of which is this was a challenging yes it was, uh, this is one of those games that you play it because you're dumbfounded as to why you're playing it that's one of the, I, also this had definable keys yes. right off the get-go yes that doesn't sound like a lot but it is that's a big deal <laughs> you're right and this is something i've learned to appreciate on the, on the zx spectrum i do all my spectrum playing with the keyboard too right and so you love seeing that definable keys button yes. come up because otherwise you're stuck trying to figure out what in the hell's happening yep you know, and trust me, there was not definable keys on my game, no. and it was hilarity. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. But yeah, I, you know, <coughs> you know, normally I poo-poo your idiotic endeavors, but in this rare instance, I endorse it. And this is a rare title because it was not like it was not released under the Mattel umbrella. Uh, when the rights reverted back, uh, they took this and a few other games and said. 
screw it, we're going to release these. We think these are going to be So, Mattel developed them, and they just didn't ever release it. Is that what you're saying? No. No, the developer for this was... Uh, I thought Mattel uh, actually developed this one. Uh, yeah, good luck. I couldn't find hardly anything that kind of information on these. They're t- it was tough I to find. I do not see who developed it. <clears throat> I think all the Aquarius tiles were Mattel developed, but I think. They were, uh, but yeah, but Mattel didn't get this out in their four-month uh, fire sale. So when the rights reverted, they picked it back up, and this that's how this got released. That's why you find none of these in the United States, because... Uh, when after the rights got reverted back, that the U.S. was out of the market. Are these are these difficult to obtain? I couldn't find a single selling one of these. Oh, I the, couldn't find one that was sold, and I did more searching on trying to find a price for this thing than I did any other research. Uh, it was just I couldn't. There, it's just not out there. You know, one thing that has to be uh, a topic has to be broached. And this is as good a time as any is uh, Aquarius, wacky, failed computer, whatever. You cannot fault the box art. No, Both they're these awesome. Games, and, it, and much like the Odyssey had the cool boxes, the Aquarius had these abs. At least the ones I looked at had these absolute knockout box art. Yes, your number game had better box art than eighty percent of the games <laughs> I've ever seen. It was. It was. It, you know, they didn't. They didn't throw the whole. Uh, education thing in your face you know it's education because you know if you look into it enough but the hero is this kind of futuristic looking guy he's with the brown hair. looking he's yeah. a hero you <laughs> and know. he's holding numbers in his hands yeah he's like grasping like ah because you could see a scenario where this could happen in real life and that would be your guy <laughs> i must escape this maze to the numbers but uh and and similarly uh my title has a really awesome, amazing, like way past what it deserves. Yes. Artwork, amazingly good artwork. So I think we both can take, uh, both can agree. This was a fun surprise on a system that uh, most of the surprises were kind of depressing. I gotta tell you, if you're going to, I mean, I have not played very. I've played very few of the Aquarius titles. I played a few. I played four or five of them. This one is a must play. Yes. And you, but and the reason you must play it is just to experience the weirdness. That's of right. It. And now, we get a user review on this too, don't we? Uh, did I don't know. Let yes, me have we a look. Do. You know, one thing about a game like this, and I wonder if this had ever been done on an, on another machine. You know what I mean? I mean, I, it seems like something that's kind of obvious. Seems like it would be pretty easy. Um, the thing is. Uh, I don't know of any title that does it quite like this. Uh, oh, I should have known. Our good buddy. Oh, Graham. yeah. 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 W. Yeah. Let's Vicky. see what Graham has to say. Yeah, I had to help him figure out how to actually play these games, but he figured well. it out. Uh, Graham says, in terms of zero in, a maze game with the aim of finding the numbers and then selecting the appropriate math sign to reach the target number, all while avoiding enemies. I actually really enjoyed this game, and if I was younger, learning math this way would have been great. And this game isn't as easy as it might sound, as some numbers move between the maze, and you don't always get the number you want, so you might have to mix up your math signs. I like the doo da theme, too. Even my daughter, who is almost 11, liked this game. Eight and a half out of ten. Bam. A hundred percent agree with all of that. There it is. A hundred percent agree with all of that. <laughs> now, did you find yourself subtracting more or adding more? I, I, well, it well, you have to add to get up to it, of course. Yeah, I but. usually add. I mean, I did everything I could. I got unmolested, sat down and played it. I got to like, I think, just playing it straight through. I got, I got past level twenty, I think, at one point. I, I kind of did what you did. I, played I skipped it, around. Though. I played it up to. I think it was about twenty. And then I, I was like, uh, you know, I, I need to see where this goes. Oh, I was like, you want to like challenge? 85. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. it go, I mean, and the thing is, I'm sure it's a steady ramping. Sure. And, and but I mean, you could say, I, I'd like to see the man go sit down. To, oh, hey, where's the speed run of this? Attention, speed runners! Here is your game Damn. right here. If you speed run this, you're a man. Yeah, you're yeah. A, you're it, a math teacher, is what you are. <laughs> So, yeah, we endorse that game. Any, it, it, does it have any reviews or anything you need to talk about before we move on? Uh, I think we are ready to pull, to talk about your game, and you All chose. Right. I chose an old favorite of mine, the old Night Stalker. Oh, now, man. When I saw that there was a Night Stalker release right. on the Aquarius, I leapt oh, like a puma. I was in, you know, because number one, cool name. It's not a puma. Now, uh, uh, 
we've never spoken about Night Stalker, I don't think, on the show. But Oh, yeah, we have. Have we talked about oh, Night Stalker? because it's my favorite television game. Well, Night Stalker is, is a great game uh, 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 on the Intellivision. It's a beautiful game. It was yes. where, is, is it your favorite television game? It's it in is. my top five. It is. I would say... I like intelligent baseball an awful lot. Yeah, so that would probably be really number good. one. Intelligent yeah. football is okay too if you get the playbook. Yeah. But Night Stalker, a simple concept. It's actually, in some ways, it's very similar to Brent's game. Uh, you are in a maze and you are tasked with going around and shooting the killer robot that's on your tail, right? I mean, simple. Now, uh, this was a, an Aquarius uh, re release, if you will. This is a, this is a, they redid it for the Aquarius. Uh, this came out in ninety or in eighty three and uh, cost a whopping twenty nine dollar dollar bill. So did mine on release twenty nine yeah. ninety nine. So, it seemed to be the standard Aquarius price. And this did come in uh, with the uh, it came with a manual cartridge and the keyboard and gamepad overlays. Now let's talk before we get into this too far. Let's talk about the controls in this game. This is one thing I've, 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 I've always not liked. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> If you emulate the Intellivision, the Intellivision, we talked about the N64 a while back, and the Intellivision is eerily similar in some ways. Oh, yeah. If you is, don't have actually. the actual peripheral joysticks to play the games, you're in a whole world of pain. Yeah. Because what they would do is they would use the, that, that keypad to, as in game controls for some game. And this game here is one where it actually is a real pain in the butt to emulate because in this game, you use the disc. On the Intellivision, you use the disc to move around, and you use the buttons to shoot in in any direction. Now, the, right. the good side of that is you can run one way and shoot the other, a la Robotron or something like yes. that. So it's effectively emulating. It's, it's a dual stick game. Right. But the bad side of it is if you don't have that controller, uh, you're going to have problems because you have to, and, you know, and, and various emulators handle this in different ways, but I've not found too many that handle it very well. No. And now with Main, what I like to do is set on the on the computer or the uh, arcade machine. I've got this set up literally like Robotron. Yeah, I just run around and use the joysticks to shoot, and that works great, by the way. Sure. So <laughs> uh, this thing has a smaller game pad, and so it's even wackier. The controls are yeah. even wackier because you would have thought, well, they're reprogramming this thing for the for the. Uh, Aquarius, we'll just get rid of that and let you shoot in the direction you're going or something like that. You could get away with it. It wouldn't like mar the game to do that. No, then that screw no, that. Or they made it with the keyboard controls in mind, not the controls. Well, let's controls. talk about the keyboard controls. They're horrible. Well, I mean, you have to. Again, we don't have an Aquarius, and so their keys are in a different. They're not exactly like a, a sure. modern keyboard. So All right. Just playing this was an interesting experience in trying to find out what the keys did. Yeah. And I finally went and got the keyboard overlay to, to, to play it because you've got your hands. This is before there was any sort of stain on what, where the keys went. And I believe the keys you used on this was, was to, uh, I think to move, it was the uh, uh, comma, M, uh, and uh, J, a, K, L, I think. Yeah, it was, it was, something a, it was like a diamond that. pattern. And then to shoot, it was the it was like Z, A, a, a and it was a D, C, S, X, F. It was real it was bizarre. Really, yeah. Now, it's funny It's funny how quickly your brain can attune to something like that. And after a while, I was, I was going around like it was nothing. I was like, oh, I got it. Uh, but it, it did take me a little while to. And so that's something, if you're going to emulate this, you want to keep that in mind. Because a lot of people emulate Night Stalker, and I've seen this in videos. They'll put up a video of review or something on Night Stalker, and they will be like, "Why can't I shoot? What's going on?" Well, that's because you don't you, you don't use the button right. to shoot. And so there's a, there's a little tidbit for you. So um, so this game was designed by a fellow named uh, Steve Montero, and it, and it was released on the Intellivision eighty two. This also got ported, by the way, Brendan. Did you know? I didn't even know this. I never even tried this version. There's an Atari twenty six hundred version of this called Dark Cavern, and it's released under the M Network label. That was Mattel's uh, Atari label. Uh, so that's kind of neat. And get this. I didn't know this either. There's an Apple II and a PC version of this as well. Yeah, I never knew any of that, uh -huh. man, until I, and, and so, until I looked into it. So here's the way this works. Uh, you are in a maze. The maze is always the same. Yeah. Um, you, and you, Bad part number one. Yeah, you, and you run around, and you are trying to avoid uh, various critters, and you're also trying to avoid a killer robot. Now... Uh, um, in the in television version of this, you're in this really, it's almost like a cavern. It looked like a, a an underground cave. There's like it's all pointy and jagged yes. and, and and cool looking. It was a cool looking it was thing. Awesome. Looking. And then up in the upper left hand corner of the screen is a spider web up there. Now the webbing in this uh, uh, is uh, considerably different. We'll get that in a moment. 
but in the Intellivision version, it looked like a white spider web, and the background was blue, and you and you ran through this dark area being chased. Now your opponents in this, you've got your, uh, you got bats, mm-hmm. you got spiders, and you've got the the uh, robot. All right, the bats and the spiders don't kill you; they just stop you. Yeah, and then, and the like robot biting and annoy. I will tell you. That's just, you might as well be dead, because often the robot will come down and blow you away. The robots in this are, are not stupid, and they get smarter as they go. And they're, they're real smart. So, something else about this game is when you start off with it, you have no weapon. Nothing. You, you're, you're, in this, right. you're in this impenetrable bunker, okay? Yep. Now, I always wondered if the, everything, if the robots keep coming, why ever leave that bunker? I would think it'd be cool if they'd well, added something. Like, what they should have done is added, like, supplies to the map that you had to go get. See, I'm making the well, sequel yeah, right here. Yeah, but you, you can't do that. We're supposed to review the game well, I'm just saying, in front of us here. For, for future reference, when they come out with Night Stalker 2, make it so you live in that bunker. It's the future, and you've got to go out and get supplies for the bunker, and that gives you a goal to go out of the maze. They didn't have that. So you're just going out there. You're just, I'm pissed off on to kill a robot, I guess. Because <laughs> you're right. I can't think of any other reason to leave that bunker. Because you can't escape the maze. You know, so you're bummed. And the robots never stop coming. So anyway, you go out, you and you have to go get the gun icon. The gun icon will be sitting somewhere in the maze, randomly. Sometimes it's right outside your door. Yeah. Sometimes it's it, it, on a far corner. It, it's uh, sometimes it's real tough to get. You get you only get like oh, was it four or five shots with the gun before the yeah, uh, it's before limited. you have to yeah. So you know you can't just go out there and like go bananas. And so that's there's a strategy to the game. Uh, so well, I mean there is. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? It's it's a strategy for the game. Um. So, the, by the way, this game was the only game ever created by Steve Montero at, when, as, as a programmer. Think about that. This is, his, he, this is the first and only game he did, which I think that's kind of cool. Um, so, you go out, you get your gun. Now it's time to fight this robot. Well, how hard is that? Pretty hard. Uh, there's the robot. There's a bunch of different robots. We're going to go through a couple of them here. So, uh, the, you can kill the bat by shooting the bat. He's yeah. dead. You kill the spider, same thing. You shoot him, he's dead. The robot dies, but he's replaced by another robot. And after so often, the robots get tougher. Yeah. All right, so you've got the gray robot. He, he just basically he moves around and shoots. He doesn't, he's not, he's, he shoots at he's you. He's competent. He's competent, yeah. Then you've got the blue robot. And, it, and these robots change when you get to a certain point total, all right? The blue robot comes out, and it's more intelligent. And then you've got the white robot. He comes out at 15,000, and he's real tough and requires you to shoot him extra times. Yeah, multiple shots. you got a black robot. He also requires you to uh, hit him extra times. And this guy has bullets that will shoot. He can shoot your bullets basically out, out of the air, which is cool. Then you've got the invisible robot. Enough said. <laughs> he's, a, he's just like the black robot, but he's invisible. So you And you run around and shoot this guy. Now... I knew all this stuff from playing the original. Sure. So I, yeah, wanted, to, I, wanted, to, basic I wanted to see how this compared to the original and with its computerized, updated, uh, update ground. It, it compared horribly. Horribly. Um, the maze looks like... I, it's a red beaded maze. Let's yeah, go with that. It's garbage. And it's not good. It just It's not nearly as cool looking mm-hmm. as the old one. Uh, I thought the spider looked pretty good. It looked pretty eh. good, and the webbing was okay. It, no, the webbing was well. Horrible. The webbing in the other game is a different color, and it yeah, and it's, it looks like a web. This looks like a, more like a net. But I mean, I, it's you, some people might say that the webbing looks better. I mean, some people might say that. Yeah, a blind person. Well, I'm just saying it depends on your point of view. Your guy, you know, the uh, the uh, the guy you played in the original game was it was almost the encapsulated the running man. Uh, logo was, of it, the television. It was awesome uh, animation. Yeah, he had awesome animation when he ran. Well, awesome for the time. This guy oh. is less cool. He's not as good looking. He's okay, and the robot's not as good looking yeah. either. Something else. The sound in this is not nearly as good. And the other, and the first one, there was just like this like steady beat going on. It was on. like atmospheric. And yeah. the robot made these. The, his shots were always going off, and they made these really weird yes. noises. You know, in this one, it's just that it, it's not there. Yeah. It's it's not there, man, and, and it was I was stunned to be honest with you because I, I this is one game I have always wanted to try. It, it's a, it's a letdown. It's basically uh, the the uh, lighter, lamer version of the original. What, what, now, what did you think? I clearly you weren't very impressed with it. But, I mean, you you went into this probably thinking the same thing I did, didn't you? This I played a, this after I played Zero in, so I was riding kind of high. Actually, I played 
this was the last game that I played for the Aquarius. Because <coughs> I, I checked out a few other titles as well. Uh, this was so watered down from the Intellivision version that uh, it was inferior in every single possible way. Uh, control, sound, graphics, and gameplay. Uh, and because of that, I didn't want to play it. Uh, I played it for as long as I could stomach, was which was about a half an hour. Uh, it got to the point where I wouldn't die; I would just quit. Uh, I mean, I thought it was pretty challenging. I will say that. <coughs> how did I, do you control this with the keyboard as well? Yeah, oh yeah. So, how long did it take you to get the controls down, or did you ever get them down? Oh, it it wasn't bad. It, they're laid out stupidly. Yeah. I mean, again, it's it's not their fault. It's different. It's a whole different computer. So. Not being able to go into the lower uh, left hand corner because that's where your score is. But they don't wall it up. It looks like a passage you can go into. Really annoyed me. Uh, just all it would have taken was one little section of wall to make it look like you can't go in there, and it would have been fine. But they left it open, which was a dumb choice. Uh, of course, you can't go back in your bunker, uh, which you could in the uh, uh, in television version. You I'm could, almost. I could sure. go back in the bunker. Oh, I couldn't get my little guy to go in there. Yeah, he went back in. Uh, I, I I struggled with that. So, which for me, it became a complete running gun. Uh, but it was like the AI was good. I'll give it that. Uh, you could go back in the bunker. Yeah, I could never get him to go back in. I'm sure, I'm sure I got him back. I, I mean, it's not like I did it over and over to get him back in there. It's normally, once I come out, I don't go back in, but I'm pretty sure I can get yeah, him back in. Yeah, because I tried to dodge a bullet that was being shot at me across the go by going back into the bunker. Sounds so like you're in that. That's what I'm no, guessing. Oh, of course, I might have just missed the down key. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the the controls on this were were so they were it was this so was, this was a difficult game to. Um, to emulate effectively again, it's 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 the it's the controller. Well, but I have a keyboard. I should have. We, we should have tried this the on the. Aquarius on the had a keyboard. I didn't have any trouble. So I didn't have that much trouble controlling it. Oh, I didn't either. After I figured out the control, but yeah. it was uncomfortable. But I mean, this game, like I said, it's it's notorious for having weird control. Uh, so but go. yeah, I, I. Why would you ever play this over the Intellivision version? You would not, and that's the problem. I was hoping. <laughs> For an incredible experience that was maybe an updated version, and what you got was a like I said a watered up version. Now here's something I didn't know. Just this is for people that are fans of Night Stalker because I mean, listen, I love Night Stalker. Before we, we're killing this game, it's not bad. And by I mean it does exactly what Night Stalker does. You run around ch getting chased by robots. It works fine. I disagree because half of the uh, fun and awesomeness of Night Stalker is the atmosphere. And this has no atmosphere. But I'm saying this is literally this has taken Night Stalker and turned it into generic maze run shooter. Well, you're, I'm not disagreeing with you. But I'm saying if this will play, you can play a pretty good facsimile of the game gameplay. It doesn't necessarily it's not as good or rich. I'm saying it's the facts of the game plays but, pretty well. But I mean, if you say that. You're missing the point of what makes Night Stalker well, awesome. I understand what you're saying. Anyway, the game sucks, guys. No, it doesn't. Move, suck. What do you have to say? The uh, um. This is something I didn't know until I was looking at the wiki here. The, the uh, they made a uh, the, the Intellivision version was made available for the PlayStation Three through the PlayStation Home in fall of 2012. Now get this: uh, in addition to being filled with spiders and bats, it had a greater variety of killer robots and a variety of maze structures. That's something worth checking out right there. There's so somewhere out there on the PlayStation Three Home, you, there's a newer updated version with different mazes. That might be kind of fun to try out. So, I think I think I might try it. Sure. But I mean, the original is a good game. This one it it, it was a, a let down, I'm afraid. What did our what are our fine fine viewer reviews? Uh, the Gram, uh, another maze game, but this time you need to collect a weapon to shoot back at your enemies that move faster and have unlimited ammo, but your weapon runs out. I found <laughs> this game a lot harder because you also need to use the directional fire keys. And you could not redefine them. That's true. Oh, yes. It's un unlike your game. If I could use a controller, it might make the game easier, but with all those keys, it's a keyboard mastering challenge before the game itself, and the ruthless enemies shooting at you, this isn't much fun as it could be. Six out of ten. I doubt Graham has probably hadn't played the original of this one. I, I would say six is still mm. being generous. I would have given this, uh, out of ten, 
probably a three. You're an extremist, though, when it comes to that sort of thing. You're real tough. Now, I used a whole spectrum of numbers. Um, so... I will never go back and play this game. That's what... That, well, at I mean, the that, end there's of the day, no reason not at to. At the end of the day, that's what matters to me. I uh, I looked at something on eBay and Blue Dot. They, these are available, pretty readily available. And by the way, again... As we mentioned earlier, the the, the uh, well, box these were probably sold in America. The box on this is awesome. Yeah, that's an awesome it box. Is awesome I'm sure box. it was because this is a big hit on the television. Uh, you can get these uh, all day long between 14 and 59 bucks. Uh, I think the higher end one I saw was sealed. So there, there are still sealed sealed copies uh, available of this game. So, any closing thoughts on the Aquarius, Brandy? Uh, I I had it was a uh, uh, a brief jaunt through the age of Aquarius, but I enjoyed almost all of my time. I enjoyed learning about it. I enjoyed playing most of its games. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, it has not had as much emulation or preservation as other systems, and hopefully uh, hopefully that will change. Mm. And I think one of these days, if I ever pick one of these up, we may come down this road again. Yep. One thing that we'll do dime after time, though, is spin the wheel. Let's yeah, get it going. whether we want to or not. That's right. Now, tell them what we added this week, Brandy. Uh, we added Mega Drive. This is games that would have been exclusive for the Mega Drive. Uh, so that's right. A this. bit of a, a bit of a twist. Yeah. So this is these are basically the Mega Drive European only releases. Here we go. A good spin there, man. All right. Oh my gosh, we it's finally here? happened. The Channel F. The Channel F. Now, Brent's already ready for the show. I completely forgot even what game I chose. Tell the people when. what you did there, dummy. <coughs> many, many, many. Man, I don't even remember what episode it was. It was a long time ago. 30 or so episodes ago. I thought the wheel had spun Channel F. So I had done all my Channel F research. Despite the fact we didn't say it spun Channel F, and that never, <coughs> and, it, and it didn't come up. It never came up. Uh, so I, I reviewed a completely, I, I had a crunch time, because Aaron was like, what do you pick? You, I was like, I'm picking this game. He's like, no, you're not. This is not even on the system. I was like, what are you, so we had a big fight, and it turned out we were, uh, we were, uh, we were looking at two different systems. So I'm looking forward to the Channel F. I got to go back and find all my notes. Yeah, Channel F, it's funny, this, this is a system that actually predates the Aquarius by a couple years. This is, yep. a, uh, this is your, this is the legendary first cartridge-based home console uh, thing. And, and this one, I actually have some experience playing some of these games because I went through them and played them a while back. So th this should be a good time. Excellent. And they don't have a huge library either, so we should have some uh, interesting times looking it up. Hey, before we go, just a couple plugs in. Um, <clears throat> it's been announced, Brent, the uh, Amigathon uh, 2019 will take place uh, July 20th, 2019. Uh, me, the boat, you... Probably a cast of thousands. Yeah, as well. shows up, we'll be, uh, we'll all be descending. All eyes on the internet will be descending uh, and looking at the Amigathon. We'll be raising money again this year. Uh, I believe it's uh, for the Children's Miracle Network. It I think is. It's the same, yes. I think it's the same outfit. Uh, last year we had a real good uh, go of it, and uh, uh, we're hoping for more of the same. Now, uh, if you are interested in uh, sponsoring a segment, uh, you can uh, drop me a line at uh, argpresents at mail.com or you can go over to everythingamiga.com and click on the link there. Uh, they are filling up quickly with yes. people sponsoring games and uh, they can give you the full rundown on that. Uh, it should be fun. I believe Bo told me that we've already raised n nearly $500 yep. uh, in just people sponsoring games. We've had a lot of generous people donating, uh, you know, 50 plus dollars. And if you can, if you can only drop a fiver, or even a single on us, uh, it all goes to a great cause. So it is something that is definitely <coughs> worthy. Um, and this, uh, again, this is none of this money goes to us. No. It doesn't even pass by our hands. No, it goes no. straight to the straight to the cause. Yeah, right. that's the good thing about you know the thing about the internet now is we don't have to really, you know, I, that's what I like about it, charitable efforts. You know, you're you're out of the loop. There's no shenanigans that they're possible. And though. this is a a reputable. Charity. Oh yeah, uh, many, many, many years old. That's right. That's right. Um, also, want to plug the Amigo Aaron weight loss wager. We're going to be. Uh, I'm going to be meeting. I'm going to be having my Waterloo. I'll be the Day of Judgment. Will be uh, right around noon. <laughs> You're going to uh, cut weight. 
I'm yeah. going to cut weight. You know, I've listen. It's uh, uh I'm not going to make excuses, but I've I've been, it's been steady, and I'm great. I did. I'm doing the best I can, and I'm hoping I can drop. I've got a month to go bananas and now, drop some more to weight. To be fair, are you, is, the, is the wager going to be the day before? No, it'll that, be during the show. We'll be doing oh, it. Oh man, that's that does not sound like a good idea. Well, that's what we're doing. Noon. That way, after 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 I weigh in, I can just eat whatever I want. <laughs> Was, gonna, he's gonna be chewing on table legs. <laughs> that was Boat's idea. Uh, so hey, listen, you, uh, I had a, I had a, had a pretty good run uh, to be honest oh, yeah. with you. And and hey, it was a wager, so you know I'm I'm gonna fulfill my end of the, of the bargain. But if you're interested in uh, kicking in a few bucks for every pound I lost, uh, you I should have had I should have allowed for people to bet against me too. That was <laughs> you know more jerky type. But you can go over to <laughs> you can go over to everythingamiga.com. Uh, and you'll see the Amigo Aaron weight loss wager icon. Just click on that. It'll take. It'll get you started on how to uh, kick in a few bucks on the on the weight loss wager. And we have an, uh, that's going to go to our overall total. I believe Boat said his goal this year, since we're only doing the twelve hour Amigathon this year, was to raise two thousand dollars. Two thousand is our so goal. That so would we're be, hoping to smash it. We, really. And we did. We did real well the last two years. And yes. We always have a good time, don't we? Until until we oh, don't. Oh, it is. It's a, it's a fun end. time. And so this year it should be a little bit easier since it's shorter. So we'll, we'll have a good time. And me, and me and the Brent here. We talked about doing a little something ARG style somewhere down the line to uh, pick up those last twelve hours, maybe. Uh, so uh, you want to say hi to anybody in the chat room, Brennan? <clears throat> uh, we've had a pretty active chat. We have uh, T Bird, Duncan Styles, uh, Doctor Blowfin, Jason stopped by. Doctor Who? Blowfin. Doctor Blowfin. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Start me as <is> fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Necronom, a Nak ZR. Uh, Volchek from Russia. Nice. Uh, How do you know that? Is that his name? He said. He oh, said. Cause that, I like that that's his name. <laughs> I'm Volchek from Russia. Uh, free lunch stop by. Uh, Necronom. He came in twice. He did. He Legendary Wizball. Graham, of course, making an appearance. Always nice to see you, Graham. Thank you again for reviews. We always love reading someone else's opinion on this. It's always nice. Very good. So, I think we've dawdled enough, Brent. Uh, hey, we're bringing this one in in under an hour. So everybody take a drink. Uh, we will be back next week with Channel F. And until then, bye for now.